FEMA has a national flood insurance program that requires certain homeowners and businesses in high-risk zones to purchase insurance for flooding. As the amount of flooding continues to increase, the areas for those maps should incorporate climate change to fully capture flood risks. That's according to Alicia Puente Cackley. She is Director of Financial Markets and Community Investment at the Government Accountability Office. Alicia, welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, so what's the current problem with this program? Why is it on your high risk list? So the National Flood Insurance Program is on the high risk list because it is really not sustainable in its current form. The program is, it's an insurance program for, uh, for properties that have been um, uh, designated as being inside a special flood hazard area. But the premiums that are charged for the for those um, insurance policies do not reflect the full risk of the pro of the um, possibility of flooding, and so um, sometimes the uh, FEMA has to pay out more in claims than they've taken in in premiums, and that's just not sustainable um, uh, over the long term. And especially because when I say FEMA has to pay it out, I really mean the taxpayer has to pay it. So what is FEMA doing currently to improve the flood insurance program? So FEMA has just very recently changed their, um, poli their um, the way that they um, calculate their premiums. So the, the, the rate setting pr program that they have is now going to reflect risk more than it did in the past. Unfortunately, that also will have implications for affordability for some people's um, for some properties that are very high risk, uh, what um, also needs to happen is is for the um, for that to be addressed as well. So, uh, let's talk about your recommendations sure. that are in the report. Should should the whole program be scrapped and redone? So, we have done a lot of work on on this program over the years, and um, we have encouraged both the agency and Congress as a whole to really consider comprehensive reform of the program. Um, that has a lot of, of pieces to it. It has to do with changing the way that, that um, uh, premiums are, are calculated, the, the risk rating of the program, but it also has to do with things like um, getting better participation in the program, and we have a, a recent report where we made some recommendations both to Congress and the agency for ways to do that. Um, and there also needs to be a way to address the debt that the program is in right now because the program is, is $20.5 billion in debt at the moment and that needs to be addressed. Um, and we have a few other things that, that we also recommended as part of that comprehensive reform. So you say Congress shouldn't be involved. How, how, show, how so? What do you want Congress so to do? So Congress created the program to begin with, and Congress has set some of the ways that the program um, is, is set up. And in particular, this uh, requirement that, that uh, uh, homeowners who have federally insured, federally backed mortgages and who are in special flood hazard areas need to have insurance. But the way that, that the special flood hazard area where is calculated, which is something that FEMA, FEMA's maps relate to, that is, um, it, it hasn't been changed in uh, decades and it doesn't really reflect well the way the um, both risks that are, that are current and it doesn't reflect, uh, it doesn't give people a good idea of what their um, true risk of flooding is. So those maps definitely need to be updated is FEMA open to these recommendations? What of their reaction? FEMA been? has has is definitely open to uh, uh, a lot of the recommendations that we've made. They haven't always been able to move as quickly as as um, we would we would expect or would like. But they are uh, they ha they have limitations. They have limitations of capacity. They have um, limitations uh, in terms of what they are what they're actually responsible for and w and what is. Um, uh, it, but they're not, and so uh, there's a certain amount of of, uh, ref of the reform that needs to happen through um, congressional action as well. And what about other agencies? Um, are there other agencies that would be involved in improving this program? So the other agencies, the, the banking regulators are um, some agencies that have information that would be helpful to FEMA, in, especially around the area of um, encouraging participation in the program or ensuring participation in the program for those those properties that are at high risk and that are in, are federally insured. So the banking regulators um, are supposed to 
be paying attention to the, to the compliance of those um, homeowners, making sure that they actually have flood insurance. And uh, FEMA has a little bit of inf some information that would be helpful there, but the banking regulators as well could, um, could be sharing information with FEMA. And we have some recommendations about uh, making sure that that happens too. And what about the, the risk maps that we talked about earlier? It, is, has there been any progress on updating those maps? FEMA is definitely works on updating the maps on a on a regular basis. There, as as they're required to, they also do a lot of work uh, outside of those regulatory maps that that are are um, s sort of specified in law as to how those are supposed to be done. They have a lot of other information that doesn't get incorporated into the maps right away, or at least not now. Um, and we have some recommendations to to FEMA about. Um, about ways to, to um, bring more information, especially more information about climate change, about um, different hazards that, that, uh, that were not incorporated originally. All right, well, Alicia, thank you so much for coming in. Nice to talk to you. You're very welcome, thank you.